Hey everyone, Horror Hottie here. Today I'll be discussing my love for the Child's Play series. Very few horror movies and villains successfully scare me, but this one definitely does. I have undergone the task of pitting every single one against each other in this ranking. Obviously spoilers are ahead, so proceed with caution. All timestamps will be included, so if there's a film you don't want spoiled, simply skip ahead to the next film in the lineup. For reference, I use a 5 point rating system. Number 8, Child's Play, the 2019 remake, 0.5 stars. This isn't even a Chucky film. Someone wanted to make a scary doll film but knew it wouldn't do well unless they slapped a big name on it. Chucky is the worst he's ever looked here. They tried to cutify him a little, but it doesn't work. He also stays robotic the whole time. He has no sense of humor. They made all the characters really unlikable in this one. Here, Andy is the product of a teenage pregnancy from his bitchy mom who works at a supermarket. Andy is cast as an older, ungrateful kid. That kid that Andy is friends with was rude as hell walking into a stranger's apartment like that. They added a family cat in this remake just for him to be abused. Those kids are too young to be watching horror movies. And this is coming from someone whose mother put on the original Chucky movie for her as a young kid. And I know the effects it had on me. The stepdad character was pissing me off, telling Andy to be a man. He isn't a man, he's a boy, so don't expect him to be a man. Andy is a psychopath. He is so fucking stupid, hiding evidence of a body. Bad CGI is used. There's literally one good thing about this film, and it's the one aesthetically pleasing shot of Andy standing in front of a group of televisions all playing static. Just watch the original instead, this isn't worth your time. The original is the scariest in the series, and in general, one of the best films I've seen. This, on the contrary, is one of the worst. How do you mess up this bad when the source material is so good? Number 7, Child's Play 3, 1.5 stars. I feel so bad for Andy. It's so obvious he has crippling PTSD. I don't know how he even got into the military when his trauma is so publicly known. You don't even need doctor's records to find out about it, all it takes is a Google search. The military is weird as fuck and won't let you join if you've been diagnosed with any mental illnesses. If he didn't have PTSD before, he will by the time he's done serving. I hope this film convinced some people not to join the military. The setting here sucks so bad. The only thing I like about it is the awesome table with the miniatures inside and that Chucky gets a sling makeover. This also briefly has a cool carnival. Number 6, Cult of Chucky, 1.5 stars. Good on Andy's date in the beginning being cautious about him owning guns. It's a red flag. I've been institutionalized before and it sucked every time, but I would do it again if it meant Jennifer Tilly visited me. Chucky talks about how NBC's Hannibal shouldn't have been cancelled and I agree, it's my favorite show. The biggest thing that brought this film down was the setting. The editing is noticeably bad in some parts. The creators of this have to be out of their minds if they think falling glass will decapitate someone. I'm not a fan of needles. I had to look away during the injection slash hypnotism scenes. I can't handle flashing strobe lights. I don't like how mind-bendy they try to make the set points. As always, I never enjoy seeing sexual assault portrayed on film. This film thinks we care all about the characters and their problems, but we don't. This also doesn't feel like real organized therapy. The therapist rarely feels in control of the group. I wasn't a fan of the duplicated Chucky concept. Number 5, Curse of Chucky, 3 stars. I really love the beautiful home featured here. That indoor elevator is the coolest. I also really enjoyed seeing an au pair represented. I was seriously considering that for a career when I was younger, but I ended up pursuing other fields instead. The actress playing this character is actually really skilled, and I'd love to see her cast in more films. Sadly, she has a small repertoire. The thing that impressed me the most in this film was the scene where Chucky is holding the mother captive in a room full of sunflowers. It is beautifully shot, being completely in grayscale, other than the sunflowers. I'm a sucker for this type of color grading. I've said it once, and I'll say it again, human Chucky slash Charles Lee Ray is fine. They changed Chucky's backstory here, but I like it for the most part. 
It felt like they were trying to write Tiffany out of the story, but she made an appearance at the very end, so that's good. I enjoyed the after credits scene. The dialogue here is very 50-50. When it's good, it's amazing, and when it's bad, it's atrocious. I wasn't a fan of cheating being included. There's a scene here with the protagonist and a mailman. After he leaves, she wonders if he was flirting with her. Girl, if your mother wasn't there, he was down to hook up. The husband makes a big deal at one point about how the au pair gets paid $400 weekly, which is more than he makes at his job. It's literally smarter in every way for him to just quit his job and be a homemaker. Also, $400 weekly feels very underpaid for a full-time live-in au pair. The extra execution scene looked very inaccurate. I know they change Chucky's mold every movie or so, but I wasn't a fan of the changes they made here, especially with the facial expressions. When he's injured instead of his usual blood and guts, it's just doll stuffing inside. In my opinion, the series should have ended with the previous installment. Number 4, Seed of Chucky, 3.5 stars. This is when Chucky went meta. I like that they cast Jennifer Tilly as herself, however, I wasn't big on all the other celebrity cameos and callouts. Jennifer is what makes this series so good. I agree that she's perfectly cast as Tiffany. I love when horror films utilize those red rooms that develop photos. This is also the first time I've seen they've included gender fluid representation. That's awesome. I really like Chucky and Tiffany's child. I don't find the insistence of mentioning Tiffy Tiffany's mother funny. I didn't like some ways they changed Tiffany slash Jennifer's character. She's a hypocrite in this one. Number three, Child's Play 2. Four stars. I really liked Kyle and her relationship dynamic with Andy. This one was also pretty scary. The finale setting was clever. The scene where Chucky had Andy restrained by each limb about to kill him, but the foster sister came in just in time and the parents also happened to come in just in time, making it look like she had restrained him was insane. I would lose my mind if I walked in on that and start throwing hands. <laughs> I do like Kyle, but I have my problems with her. Andy ends up smoking her cigarette due to negligence. That's so shitty. The ending left me with a really bad feeling. Yes, Chucky is defeated, but Andy and Kyle just leave feeling unsure of the future and go back into the system. It's depressing. Number two, Child's Play. 4.5 stars. <sighs> Where it all started. Fun fact, my mother let me watch this film when I was incredibly young. As in, under 7 young. That was a bit unnecessary. Now that I think about it, doll horror is especially effective for me. Maybe that's why. I am an adult now, and I am a huge horror lover, so I thought I'd revisit the series. This film is the absolute scariest in the whole series. I do not scare easily, but this was absolutely terrifying. The voodoo bone breaking scene and the one towards the end when a horrendously burned Chucky looms over Andy still attempting to kill him were highlights. I really liked Andy's mom and her co-workers relationship. I think they'd be a good couple. I also thought it was so cute that Chucky and Andy had matching outfits. Andy's actor is very talented, especially for such a young age. Number 1, Bride of Chucky, 5 stars. Jennifer Tilly is the best thing that happened to this series. Honestly, I could have stopped the sentence that Jennifer Tilly is the best thing that happened and it would still be accurate. I sewed for her so hard. Her gorgeous voice, figure, acting skills, I could go on and on. She is perfection. I'm a bad bitch myself, but I have nothing on her. If you love her, you will love this film. It features her being sexy a lot. And let me tell you, when I'm not simping for thick women, I'm simping for femme boys. I'm only attracted to femmes regardless of gender. Tiffany's boyfriend here is not only femme, but goth too. This is literally my dream film. Hell, this is better than a lot of porn I've seen. After I finished watching this, I was grateful I lived to this moment because I would have never got to see this. You're telling me there's a film out there that has a scene of a thick goth woman dominating an alt femboy wearing lingerie, restraining him in handcuffs, and giving him a strip show? Maybe life isn't so bad after all. Okay, I realize my entire review of this film can't just be Tiffany and Damien sexy, so I also gave this film points for having a lot of funny moments. 
The soundtrack is another highlight, especially with Living Dead Girl included. What did you think of my list? Be sure to let me know in the comments below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. I promised in the last video that this would be released by the end of the month and I kept true to my word. If you want to read my full reviews, check out my letterbox linked in the description. I'm also interested in your ranking, so be sure to list them, or even just your favorite and why you like it. I worked really hard on this video, so please leave a like and subscribe and hit the bell for more rankings, as well as other content. If you'd like to support my content financially, please consider becoming a patron. I have tiers starting as low as $2 a month. I even have a Patreon exclusive content up already. Check out the link in the description for more info on exclusive perks. Until next time, mwah.